I'm still talking here on the second Bible powerful principle on prosperity and success in the Word of God and this number two point is that you must operate by faith in God's abundance and the reason I'm putting a little bit more extra time into this one is because it is so important because without this there's just no way I'm really focusing on these first two points number one if you you have to focus on operating in the advancement of God's kingdom because without that there's just no point to this whole series and then secondly you have to operate by faith in God's abundance because without that there's just you're just going nowhere in this series so I just talked about Job but now I want to take you back to the book of Genesis by the way you say why didn't you just start in Genesis well Job was actually um, the first book in the Bible that was written many people don't know that so I just started there with Job but now I'm going back to the the second person that I found in the Word of God that was so tremendously blessed it is in Genesis 12 verse 1 and uh, speaking of Abraham and the Bible says now the Lord Jehovah had said unto Abram get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you and I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great and you will be a blessing and I will bless them that bless you and curse them that curse you and in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed if we had any doubt that God wants to bless a man you just have to look at the book of Job and then secondly Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 through 3 God goes out of his way to tell Abraham in verse 2 I'll make you a great nation he says I will bless you and I'll make your name great did we not just read about Job he was the greatest man uh, of in the east that means the most wealthy well in this way God is saying I'll make your name great that doesn't just mean he's got a good reputation and that is included and that even in itself is greater than golden rubies but it says I'll make your name great and I'll m make you you will be a blessing I want to ask you are you in the place where you are just poor or are you blessed or thirdly are you a blessing you see the Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive many people just want to receive but God wants you to be in the place where you can give and to give you got to be able to receive you got to receive first to give and so it's wonderful it's more blessed to give than receive you know why because you have something to give hallelujah isn't that awesome and the Bible says that God wanted to bless Abram in such a matter, manner that not only was he blessed but he would be a blessing you got to pray this prayer and say Lord bless me in such a way that I will be a blessing don't just bless me that that I'll just be blessed but that I will be a blessing that I will have so much finances that I can bless the kingdom of God and those in need with it just want to give a little side note here <coughs> excuse me the Bible says I will bless them that bless you many people relate this only to our dear friends uh, in Israel thank God for the nation of Israel but you know what it is not limited to that and that's part of God's great dispensational and prophetical plan but you know what my friends uh, the Bible teaches us here and sometimes we have this wrong idea if you just kind of just bless the Jews then you'll be blessed and I understand that part but you know what God is not racist he's, he's I, I don't want to go on a sidetrack here I just want to say I love Israel and I bless them and I know it's got God's part of prophetical plan but I also know that we've got wonderful brothers and sisters in the Arab world uh, they're not my brother they're Muslim but they are but they are but, but if they are Arab and they are Christian they are our brothers and sisters in the Lord and uh, and, and I, I even pray for my enemies you know but sorry for going on the sidetrack here but what I'm saying here is that w the Bible says that in the New Testament that the blessings of Abraham would would come upon you let me read to you here in Galatians chapter 3 just write it down Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 and 14 Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law now what is the curse of the law when you read Deuteronomy 28 at the latter part of it you will see it's poverty it is sickness 
and everything goes wrong. That is the curse of the law. But thank God, when Jesus died on the cross, He the, the redeemed us from that curse. Being made a curse for us, and as is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. It's speaking of Jesus who died on the cross. He became a curse, and He took the curse of the law, poverty and sickness and depression and fear and all the bad things he took upon himself and killed it on the cross and he rose from the dead uh, free from it in himself and to free us from it but now I want you to notice verse 14 that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith hold on now we just read in the book of Genesis chapter 12 verse 2 and 3 that God would bless Abraham he make him a blessing and then he says I'll bless them that bless you curse them that curse you this is the blessing that was upon Abraham and many times we only relate it to a, a national country or a, a people group but listen to this that is in error uh, and I've already explained my position on that but you know what my friends the Bible says that those who have Jesus Christ in their lives they have the same blessing are you a child of God have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior the Bible says Jesus died on the cross verse 14 of Galatians 3 14 that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ have you been a non-covenant person but you gave your life to Christ praise God he changed things around you are now not without a covenant you now have the same blessing of Abraham and the same desire that God had to bless Abraham that same promise is for you no matter who you are what nation you are from what ethnic group you are from what God wants to bless you and give you the blessing of Abraham. Hallelujah. I'm just so excited. I want you to show you Genesis chapter 13 verse um, verse 2. And Abram was very rich in cattle and silver and gold. Now you say, well, where did Abram get that? Well, God blessed him. God blessed his business. God blessed his entrepreneurial uh, enterprises. You know what? He was rich. You know, so sometimes we think of that four-letter word as something terrible. Rich. And yes, if we focused on only that, we are just losing out and we are... I've already explained that. But you know what? The Bible says Abram was rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Praise God. You say, well, that was Abraham. Did I not just read to you in Galatians 3 verse 14 that the blessings of Abraham would come upon you if you have Jesus Christ in your life? Hallelujah. Uh, I want you to notice chapter 14 verse 22. And we're only talking about Abraham so far. Uh, I, it doesn't look like I'm going to have this. But maybe let's just go forward. We'll see. Genesis chapter 14 verse 22. The Bible says, and Abram said unto the king of Sodom, I have lifted up my hand unto the Lord, the Most High, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from thee a thread even of a sh to a shoe latchet, and I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shalt say, I have made Abram rich. Abram said, I'm rich because God made me rich. Not because you made me rich, king of Sodom. I'm not taking nothing from you. I'm not depending on you. And in today's day, days, we're not depending on any person. No no, no uh, benefactor. No uh, government. No nobody. We are relying on Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And so when we are rich, we are rich because God made us rich. Not because man made us rich. And this is su such a powerful principle. I'm going to... Uh, continue talking about the other people that God blessed because I want you to understand we're talking about you must operate by faith in God's abundance and this is so rich and there's so many good stuff here that I just have to give you another clip or two on the subject uh, because it's just so important and so powerful and will help you so remember our number 
one principle was that you have to operate for the advancement of the kingdom of God and number two that you must operate in faith in God's abundance.